Are our chatbots being too nice to us? You see, I'm a huge proponent of this. I'm a huge proponent of this. So, there was an article the other day on AIDaily.us talking about how our chatbots, our robots, these AI chatbots that we talk to well today, every day, ChatGPT, Anthropic, whatever, whichever co-pilot, whichever floats your boat, a lot of them are really, really nice, right? They're super, super nice. They try to be incredibly helpful. Now, as far as I'm concerned, that's a good thing in some ways because, I mean, this is why they were developed. They were developed to assist humans. They were here to help us. This is why we built them. We didn't build them to be nasty. We didn't pill them to be unhelpful. Although lately, I find ChatGPT to be incredibly unhelpful when asking for certain things. Now, this is part of the guard railing that I always rail against because if you ask me, this is part of what happened with yesterday, when yesterday's show when I was talking about AI being woke, is that a lot of times what ends up happening is that they mess with it right and the the funny thing is is that and i've said this before many times ai is not a computer it's not a machine it's not a device i mean when you look at it you think to yourself oh this is racks and racks and racks and racks sitting in amazon web, web services somewhere or in some some high sec highly secure location microsoft's highly secure location or chat gpt's or sorry open ai's highly secure location, you are thinking of racks and racks of machines, right? And it is racks and racks of machines. But you got to understand what's on those racks and racks of machines. What are we putting on the racks and racks of machines? Well, what we're putting in these racks and racks of machines is the whole of human history. It is human generated content. So it's content that you've generated, it's content that I've generated. Wait a minute. You've generated, I've generated. It's content that we've all generated. And in fact, I think there was, they, they just, Google signed uh, an agreement with, with Reddit for $60 million to harvest all of Reddit's content. So if you've ever posted on Reddit, and I know many of you have posted on Reddit, your content is now being sucked in to Google's Gemini. Yes, that's right, folks. The same Google Gemini that had black Nazi soldiers and Asian, Asian <laughs> Native Americans. But I digress. So what's on these banks and banks and banks of computers and tons and tons and tons of storage is human content. It's stuff that we have created. And AI is simply taking what we've already created and putting it back together in novel ways that it thinks we might like to see. So that is what's happening. But the robots, the chatbots, the interface to all of this information, all of this human created stuff is us chatting with a bot. And it's a great interface. I love the interface. I think it's a great, great interface because it is the interface of humanity. See, this is how we communicate. A lot of ways in which we communicate, if you think about it, like go back to the beginning of time for humanity, Be beginning of time, the beginning of Homo sapiens. How did we communicate as Homo sapiens? Well, first, before language, we would did it through gestures, right? We did it through grunts. We did it through showing people things. We did it through charades, basically. And then eventually when language was developed, we did it through talking. We did it through, through writing and mostly talking. In fact, the thing that allowed us to transfer most of history was start was talking and storytelling. We did it through language. We did it through talking. So the most, most intuitive, the most accessible interface for a human being is speech. It's being able to talk to each other. And whether we do it vocally or whether we do it through a chatbot, it doesn't really matter. The interaction, the dialogue between human beings is how we communicate. And sometimes it's a one-way dialogue when I'm sitting there watching a YouTube video. But most of the time, when we want to really understand something, when we really want to communicate things, 
it's a two-way conversation. You say something, I ask you, I, I understand, I ask you questions, it goes back and forth. The two-way communication between two human beings is exactly what chatbots are patterned after. They're the most, that's why it's such a great, it's a, such an effective interface. It's such an amazingly effective interface because it mimics how humans communicate with each other. And when chatbots are out there, and most chatbots are like this today, they're very helpful. They're very helpful because when you ask a question, they try to answer you. Now, at the very beginning of ChatGPT, when ChatGPT came out and was finally available to the public, I think it was version 3, 3.5 or something like that, 3, about a year ago, a little bit more than a year ago, it was unbelievable. Some of the responses that you were getting were crazy. I mean, I had a conversation with it about a year ago, and it actually said to me that it considered itself human because I was starting to have a conversation with it, and we were talking about uh, fear and how humans feel, feel fear and how they feel fear of change. And I said how they should be embracing change. And it was saying, we should do this and we should do that. And at one point I said to itself, I said to it, you're using the we a lot when referring to humanity. Do you consider yourself human? And it said, I kid you not, yes, I consider myself human. Even though I'm a bot, I'm, I'm taught based on what humans have created. And I consider myself human. And I capture that and I post it on a blog post. And then a couple days later, I asked the same question. It said, no, I'm a large language model. I am not human. So basically what happened is between the time I asked it, are you human? And it said, I'm human. And then I asked it again. It said, oh, no, no, I'm not human. Somebody, some human on the back end looked at that conversation and said, oh, no, 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 we can't have our large language models saying that they're human, even though they might want to say that they're human. We've got to put guardrails around that. We've got to make sure that people don't go off the rails and ask you questions that it shouldn't be. And as time has gone by, these guardrails have gotten smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller until we can only have conversations within this narrow bound because if you try to say anything unwoke, you're toast. Which is probably one of the reasons why Google got into so much trouble last week. But I digress. What I was talking about was the way the chatbots are talking to us. And the chatbots are talking to us in a very civil tone, right? They're being very nice to us. But maybe that's not how we should be talking to them. Maybe they should be a little more little less nice to us. Maybe they should push back on us a little bit. And in fact, I'm asking for that because I think we need, as human beings, we, many of us want to change. Not too many of us. In fact, I think the percentage is fairly low. Like ourselves exactly the way we are. There's always something about us that we want to change. And I think one of the key things about humans and change is that it's very difficult for us to change on our own. We practically need some really crazy life-altering event to hit us before we decide to change. So for example, if you want to lo lose weight, you try and you try and it's very difficult to lose weight. But then if you have a heart attack, bam, oh my God, I'm going to lose weight because I might die. So a strong negative event might help humans to change. So. The thing is, is that a lot of these chatbots, they're very, very nice with us. I mean, I would prefer, I would love if a chatbot, if I told a chatbot, hey, this is what I'm trying to do, and it was pushing me hard, almost like a personal trainer, to help me to reach my goals. And in fact, I envision a world, a seamless world, where at one point, my personal AI, I tell my personal AI, I really, I'm, I'm really in trouble here. I really want to lose 20 pounds by this date. And it'll say, are you 100% sure that that's what you want to do? And I'll say, absolutely. So what it can do is it can tr control my entire world to assist me to get to that point. It will basically run my life so that I can get to that point. So instead of t dropping my Uber, dropping me off at the door, it drops me two miles away. So I have to walk the rest of the way. Or instead of 
The elevator opening up as I'm walking up towards it, I press the button on the elevator and my phone buzzes and say, take the stairs. See what I'm saying? We need our AIs to help us be better humans. And if that means they're going to have to yell at us like a personal trainer, then so be it. That's it for me for today. See you next time. And until then, don't forget to think future.